In this video, I'm going to tell you all the most important principles in openings, middle games and end games. And I will tell you how to think during a chess game and how to use your time. All this while playing actual chess games and explaining you move by move. Enjoy. Let's go. First of all, in the opening, you know the three important principles. Control the center, develop your pieces and castle your king. Those are the three most important ones. Then there are also other principles that are like side principles where you don't have to move the same piece twice unless you must. As in this situation where my bishop is attacked by the pawn and don't move the queen out too early because why? The queen can be attacked by other pieces that have less value. So for example, if the queen is attacked by the knight, well, you have to move the queen again. And you don't want to be wasting your time uh, moving the queen multiple times in the opening because you want to put out all your pieces. Now we castle and we're very happy, we've already done uh, a good job controlling the center with this pawn and now we have to move this bishop again but just because we must do this. Now we are in the so-called Spanish. What is the idea of this opening? Uh, basically we have developed and castled the king. Now we want to go with c3d4. We want to control the center with the second pawn and this is exactly what we are going to do. But first of all we need to defend this pawn so we'll go with the rook here. And then we'll keep going, c3 and d4, that's exactly, uh, that's an amazing opening. I would say that's a huge success if we can have two pawns at the center of the board, we did a good job. Now we need to develop also these other two pieces, how to do it? Well, this knight cannot go in a very natural square that would be here, always the pieces needs to be developed towards the center. So the knight cannot go here, so we have to think about a different path. I want to give you a suggestion. Every time you don't know exactly what is the next move, what is the best next move, think about the whole picture. So think about how to develop the entire army. So if I simply go with the knight here, I might say like, okay, but where is my bishop going out? But then I say, okay, but I have an amazing path. I can go with the knight here and then with the knight on g3, activating my knight towards the king, and then the bishop can go simply out. And that's why I'm playing knight here. This is also the main, main idea of this opening, that is the Spanish. So it's all part of the plan, but just because I've started it. If not, you have to figure it out on your own. So find a way to develop all your pieces. Great, my opponent is now attacking the bishop with my knight. And I know that in open position like this one, the bishop has more value than a knight. You might say, wait a second, a knight has a value of three, a bishop has a value of three, but what are you talking about? Well, the bishop moves uh, much faster than a knight, can move from a side of the board in one single move. Instead, the knight is relatively uh, much lower. So a knight is doing very well in blocked position where the bishops cannot move, basically, but the knight can still jump around. Instead, the bishops are doing very well in open position where they can go from a side of the board to the other and control things from very far away. But you know what I do? I just go with the bishop back and I say to this knight, nope, you're not going to take my bishop. Also, this knight is on the side of the board and they say knight on the rim is grim, something like this. Yes, or dim, whatever. Uh, it's bad. Let's put it that way very clear. This is another chess rule. Now, my opponent is bringing the rook into the action. That's not a big deal. Um, I will just keep going with my plan, so bringing the knight to g3. Now, once we have nearly developed all the pieces, because once the knight is here, we can say, like, we have developed everything. I know that this bishop is not developed, but it's ready to go out, so it's okay. We have to think about a plan. What is going to be our plan? And the more my knight is going here, it's getting closer to which square? The square on f5. Well, if I can bring a knight here, that's amazing. This bishop is no longer controlling that square. So I can use this square to go with the knight and then maybe bring the queen and give checkmate. Yes, this is why the Spanish is considered one of the most aggressive opening in chess. Because even if you start slowly, you maneuver this knight three tempos, four tempos, then long term you want to attack. And also look at those two bishops. If the center is going to explode, which... It's going to happen in the Spanish in, when, in lots of games. Then these bishops are already hitting at the king. So why is usually going towards a king side attack? But while keeping an eye also on the queen side where black has already some weaknesses. There are some cases where white is playing the move a4, which is a very typical move to attack this pawn. Okay, let's keep going with our plan. What is my opponent doing with this bishop here? He's opening up the fight for the rook. This is another important thing 
that you have to apply. How to think in chess? Well, the first thing every time your opponent is making a move, you shortly ask, what's their idea? Like this, you know now, this rook is opened up, so after pawn takes, this pawn will be attacked once, twice, three times. And it's protected just once and twice, so we have to do, we have to protect it another time. And we do it in an amazing way. We are following our plan, plus protecting the pawn again. Okay, my opponent is going back with the knight. It makes sense. The knight here has no longer a purpose, so they are going back attacking the pawn, which is not really under attack, right? So now we have to think how to keep going. We could bring a knight to, um, to f5, right? We could, but how to go on? Because what about g6? Well, then we give a check. It's all good. I really like that move. But we could also like think about developing this bishop. So maybe bishop here, bishop g5, pinning the knight. This is also looking quite nice. I think I like that move. Because you know what is the idea? I want to go here with the bishop and maybe provoking the move h6. <gasps> what? No, 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 no. This move is bad for so many reasons. First of all, I can take here, bing, boom, bang, and win a pawn. Second of all, I can take here and double the pawns in front of the king, which is also bad. But I think I will be greedy because I love material. Also, I like to keep the bishops um, nearly all the time. My community on Twitch makes fun of me because they say that I love bishops no matter what. <laughs> but not always. Sometimes I prefer knight. The point is that I play open positions. And so nearly always my bishops are better than the knights. But whatever. Hello to my Twitch community. I'll take here, I'll take this pawn, we have a pawn up, we could trade queens, that's true, but trades are good when you are up on material, so trades are good for me. Now we take with this rook, so we bring also the rook into action, another very important rule, the rooks are amazing on open files. And another important rule, so when you are up on material, trades are good, oh I said it before, we could trade here, we could also take there, we could do so many things. And I will start with this trade because that knight has to be moved, so that's good. Now my opponent has to take with one of the pawns. And now we have to solve the problem of this pawn, which is actually not really a problem. Because it's well protected, right? It is attacked one, two, three times and protected one, two, three times. So it's all good. So what to do in this situation? We have an extra pawn. How do we keep going? Usually a good idea is to improve every single piece you have also trading is good for example i have an idea so i could take here giving away my bishop that's very hard for me and after pawn takes slide with the rook on the seventh rank this is another huge rule rooks are so strong either on the second or on the seventh rank on the second for black and on the seventh for white because there are usually so many pawns on that rank and so you can just farm them all, like pins, you know, bam, 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 domino, bam, 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 bam. So this would be really good, bing, boom, bang. This one would be protected, and also we have a target here, so, okay, let's do this. So that I prove that I'm not biased about knight and bishop. I do not prefer bishops no matter what. Uh, also what I can do is attack this pawn now by going with my bishop on b3, attacking f7. This is also a great idea. I think we go for this. We are attacking. Is I'm I'm a bit concerned because my rook seems dropped. So I'm a bit scared. But for now it's all good. But imagine bishop the bishop getting here. Well then we are starting to to be in trouble. And what if that move is played next? Yeah, that's why I, I will play this move. Just trading this bishop. We want to be friends. Hello. I'm going to take there then to bring the knight to the party. And this rook is safe as long as cannot be attacked. Now, if the bishop moves here, I just take this rook so it's all good. We're just doing a friendly trade and now we do a friendly trade. The knight is going to be upgraded and the rook is still strong here. Okay. Okay, okay. So I think this move is quite strong. Let's go for it. I'm just making sure that I'm not losing material, but I'm not losing material because after f5, I'm giving a check, everybody. And I'm not just not losing material, I'm winning material because I'm going to take this rook. Yes. Now, this is a very strong move because my opponent really wants to play the move f5. Now, there is no check. So, what I have to do is to go bing, boom, bang. 
with my king protecting the rook so that after f5 i can do whatever i want with my knight to go wherever i want now there is a pawn hanging here and there is a famous game of fisher where uh, his opponent took this pawn and there was discovered the strong move g3 that is blocking the bishop the bishop can no longer move this is a very cool idea uh, as you can see also at 1800 level it works now the bishop is trapped forever and is not going to go out so that's perfect how can we win the bishop well for example by moving the knight so knight here knight there or by moving the king king here and taking it great i think i will go with the knight yes because it's the fastest way and it's also the safest because if i move the king well i have to deal with moves like f5 and once i move this uh then my rook would be hanging Okay, but now we are perfectly on time to stay there. Uh, I want to spend a few words about time management because I couldn't spend much during this game. Uh, but usually I have a good amount of time. A rule of thumb is the following. You have 10 minutes. You have to try to use all the 10 minutes during the game. How to use these 10 minutes? Well, possibly in the smartest way possible, meaning that you don't have to use like 10 minutes in the opening and then blitz out all the rest and not do vice versa, like blitzing out everything and then have end the game with nine minutes on the clock. So try to use your time. Uh, there is like, again, I want to, today I want to mention my Twitch community all the time, but uh, I analyze sometimes some of their games and they're really funny because sometimes they play rapid because they say that rapid makes you improve at chess, but they play rapid by blitzing out all the moves. And that's not what you should do. Time management means using your time in the smartest way, but using your time. And if you don't use it, uh, then play bullet. It's faster. What I'm trying to do here is to trade pieces because when you are up on material, you want to trade. And in general, we are in an end game and I'm giving you principles about end games. What do you do in end games? You do basically two things. You create pass pawn. You want to promote one of your pawns and you bring out your king. Your king has to be kept safe for the entire game. But then at the end game is party time. The king can join the party. You see this king is amazing. It's doing really great because the king cannot get checkmated. So the king can just go very happy. Sha -la -li -la -la, sha -li -la -la. Like Heidi jumping on the mountains and, and like maybe farming pawns. It becomes a strong piece simply and you gotta use it. Yeah, now I can give a fork and end this game because being I take and whatever my opponent does, I'm able to stop the pawn with the rook. I think they are going to take, but then rook b8. I mean, if they push, I play rook here. If they take, I'm going to play rook here. I mean, if they push, I can even go with the king, stopping the pawn. So they will take, yes. And I would go with the rook here. Now I'm stopping this pawn. And one eternity later, my opponent resigned. GG. All right, we have a new game. Again, white pieces. I'm very happy. So we'll try to apply the same principles again. So we control the center. Amazing. We develop our pieces. There was a pawn under attack, so we are going to take it. Now this bishop is pinning uh, my knight, wanting to take the pawn. Now here, I know a very interesting move that I'm going to play. And this knight here is a side move. My opponent might not know this move. And the idea is that I'm sacrificing a pawn because here I can't take as the knight is pinned. But now I play the move a3. Asking a question to this bishop. Do you want to take or do you want to go back? Well, they took. And now I'm attacking this pawn and they are protecting. But I think I should be able to take that pawn back. I will go with the bishop here, pinning the knight. And then this pawn should be taken at the next move. And I have the bishop here already. Did you notice that in the meantime I took the bishop here? That's cool. Okay, so knight here is attacking this pawn, so if I take here, they are going to take here. I cannot let this happen. So what do we do? We could push, we could play bishop here. Yeah, we'll play bishop here because we are pinning this knight. And if bishop d7, I'm going to take here safely because this pawn is no longer hanging. Yeah. What did just happen? I don't know, maybe my opponent checked my profile and didn't want to play with me because this is a speedrun account of Women Freedom Master Realistic and Thermal. All the points will be refounded after this speedrun. Don't worry, this is all done for educational purpose. Just to explain you all the principles and play against the opponent that you usually face. 
We are again with the white pieces against even, and we have a Karakan. This is the opening played by two uh, players. One is uh, <laughs> Zina Belenkaya, the other is Gotham Chess. Two face of the same metal. No, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> let's go here. So, going back to focus time. We have control the center. Now we are attacking this knight. It has to move one more time. We need to develop our pieces and castle. That's the idea. My opponent is going back, so they didn't literally listen to the video, develop your pieces because they are going backwards. But, I mean, how can you blame them? You can't blame them. We have already two pieces out. They have a huge amount of zero pieces out. Now, if they want to take there, go ahead. I will keep developing bishop here. And then maybe bishop here, queen here, long castle. I will go long castle because I'm in for a very sharp idea. Attack, attack, attack. So I have a strong pawn here, so I will use it to attack. I'm not sure where I should go with my... I will go here with the bishop, you know why? Because one day I want to push f4. So I will remove this knight, one day, not now, of course. And then play f4. So I will play queen here, long castle, and then maybe h3, g4, f4. Bam, 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 bam. I want to attack. Okay, my opponent is taking, giving away their bishop that... If, if the bishop would have been here, it would have been the worst bishop ever. So they did a really good job here. Also, the move g6 is a good move. Because now, I can't push f5 anymore, basically, because there are two pawns looking here. But there is a weakness on the dark squares that can be exploited. I go with the pawn on h4. You might say, what is this, Alessia? That's a free pawn, but that's not really a free pawn. Because taking here is really dangerous. It opens up this file. My opponent didn't even consider that. You should consider. Every time your opponent is offering you a pawn, you consider. Now, I took en passant, not because you must take all the time when you have the possibilities to take en passant. Because under all the videos on YouTube, when I don't do an en passant, everybody is saying like, why didn't you play the en passant? Come on, you have to play en passant. It's the rule of chess no it's not the rule of chess <laughs> you don't have to but i know that it's a fun move so you want to do it okay fine so what to do now you have to make a plan and this is what i'm doing i'm activating all my pieces all my pieces are out my rooks are in on the open files and how to go on well i would really like to attack this king that is still stuck in the middle of the board uh now the question is how to do it well, I think like this knight still didn't join the party because it's true, it's developed. But is it really active? No, no, cannot go anywhere. So I will try to reroute this knight to bring it towards more active squares. Like the square on f4 where he's attacking this pawn and this pawn. Maybe one day I will sacrifice something on g6. Now the queen is going here and again, every time your opponent plays a move, ask always what's their idea. And their idea, I think, is not direct with the queen, because the queen is attacking everything that is already protected. But I think the queen wants to leave space for the king to go for a long castle. So we will keep going with our plan, attacking this pawn, asking to our opponent what's next. I think they will go with knight f8. It looks like such a bad move, but it's actually a good move, because it's protecting pretty much everything. Everything, but not this <laughs> because now i'm about to open up really everything i'm taking here and i'm winning a pawn i think i'm winning a pawn yeah i take here i want a pawn i just want a pawn and my pieces are getting in this is the problem of my opponent position they had really few space and weaknesses and I could activate all my pieces until I want a pawn now I have material advantage what I have okay I want a piece now <laughs> Ah, no, I don't want a piece. No, I want a pawn. So I have the bishop pair and an extra pawn, which is not such a big deal because the pawn is doubled. But still, this pawn is weak, and I have the bishop here. These rooks could be activated. So still, my position is very nice. I think, like, the most important thing of this position is that this pawn is really weak. And, for example, my next move could be bishop here, attacking the rook, attacking the pawn, and winning the pawn uh, in a forced way. I want to say something about time management. Now my opponent is attacking this pawn and I will move this king here just to keep it protected. Usually the king here is much better than the king uh, here because it's protecting all three pawns. So that's a good king. Uh, so about time management, I want to say that a very good idea to use your time in a wise way is to spend time for the first time after the opening. 
So you play all your openings moves and then once you don't know anymore what to do, you stop and you think about how to solve all your problems. So how to bring out all the pieces, how to castle. You have to figure out the whole picture, not just one move at a time. This is the secret that grandmasters use. Also chess masters are using to think in chess. They don't think one move at a time, but a sequence of moves at a time. Those are called critical moments. So now the queen is back here looking at this pawn. I think my opponent wants to go here with the bishop threatening checkmate. Is this a problem? Nah, not really. I go here with the bishop attacking this rook and attacking this pawn. I think they will have to take with check and then I take back and can remove this move. Great. And now after bishop here, I can simply play queen c3. Okay, okay, that's fun. They are going with the king wild. So I think I'll sneak with my rook here because that looks lit. Uh, I mean, th this is just such a strong piece. Now my opponent is hoi boy attacking gear. That's quite annoying, but I have a nice idea. And it's to go with the queen all the way back, covering the square. But I'm also looking at this pawn. I told you that pawn was the weakest pawn in the black field. Now, if bishop goes here, I go with the bishop back, protecting the mate and opening up the square. Well, the left fire for my queen attacking on a6. So I really don't think that's good. Also, I might have checkmate. If the bishop goes here, I take here by giving a double check. If the king takes, I give a discovery check here. The king goes here and that's checkmate. I guess that's it. Okay, so this rook wants to trade. I usually don't want to trade, but if I have to, I will. Uh, can I take here with the same idea? I think so. So I take king takes, I move this bishop away. There is a problem. There is knight here. Then I take, rook takes, I take. Bing, I take. Okay, this is good. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. This looks amazing. Just amazing. After king here, I can also take the rook. And then after knight takes, give a check, the king has to move, and then I take this bishop. So this is also really great. Okay, my opponent is not doing anything that we discussed, but doing this move, which I think it's not too good. Because now the king is in real big danger. I think I will take here and then go with the queen here. I'm attacking this knight and wanting to slide with the queen here and then maybe giving checkmate. Well, not maybe. Without the maybe. Okay, the knight is going backwards. I think I will slide my queen. Maybe here. Oh, wait, there is a bishop hanging. Yeah, okay, this is a good move. Because now, if I go all the way here, I think my opponent can try to activate their own queen. But then I play this. Then I play this. Then I play this. Okay, it's all good. Bang! We slide the queen all the way. What's the idea? We want to play bishop here and take there. Or simply bring the queen here somehow <laughs> that would be checkmate but you cannot simply place the queen in the square you want so we will have to find a path to get there now if queen here threatening mate okay my opponent is threatening mate now i don't have to cover it immediately uh, i think i could give a check first i i like it check yes i like it because now where is the king going i think this is a problem for my opponent and I'm still in time to protect the checkmate because I can always do moves like this or this. So I should be able to stand here. Okay. Now I have a check here and I have a check there. I think this check is better because it's basically checkmate. Only move is bishop here. Then I have a check here. The king needs to take. And then I have a check here. The king has to go there. And then I don't have checkmate. Nice. But I have two extra pawns, so it's going to be enough. Let's go. So when you have two extra pawns, you have the advantage that in any situation you can trade pieces and you still are winning. So now we give a check. The king has to take. And then we take here. This is all four, so I can even remove that move. Uh, yes. Uh, the king goes there. And now we just protect it. Like this. Just protect the pawn. All right, and we are in a queen hand games where I have two pawns. We are doubled, but they are still going to go very far away. It would be amazing to trade the queens, but th this is the only square where the queens could be traded. And again, I can't go with the queen there. 
So we should just push the pawns and be sure that I'm not getting problems here. But I don't think there's just this diagonal that my opponent will try to use for sure. And this is what I do. But I can just go back here. And after this check, I simply go here with the king and there are no longer checks. So then I can keep pushing this pawn and the more I push, the more that pawn is going to be really annoying. Now the checks are over, this pawn is going to be pushed and pushed and pushed and we give checkmate into move. Na, 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 na. Okay, we'll give a check everybody. Okay, so now I want to push this pawn and I maybe I'm able to promote next. But this is taken with check, the king moves and then I lose the pawn as well. So, what do we do here? That's very funny. <laughs> That's a problem, actually. Okay, I'll give a check here. And if my opponent is taking, I take this pawn. So I will take all the other pawns. Basically, what I was afraid is of getting lots of checks. Yeah, sorry. I have to give again a check here and again a check here. And then... I cannot get perpetual check. This is the problem a bit with the queens. Now, if I take this pawn, check, in gear, check, in gear. And if they take, okay, that's good. I'll take here. That's great. Now, I hide here and there is no check anymore. Okay, good move. Check, everybody, and I'm going to take this pawn. Let's give it a check again. I mean, it would be great to take this pawn with check, but I don't think it's possible. Check, and we take. Oh, wait, we can trade. We can trade the queens if the king goes here. Yeah, if we trade the queens, we're just winning. Yeah, yeah, this is great. If we trade the queens, we're completely winning. This is why... Okay, so bing, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. Okay, that's winning. There we go. We trade the queens because it's the easiest way to, yeah, to make, to win a pawn end game. Now we take and now we push and we take and we push, 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 push. Nice. GG's. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these games. Those were two, well, three games, but two intense games where I tried to explain all the principles in chess. Let me know if you like this video and you might want to check out how I got to 1800 also explaining move by move all my thoughts. Enjoy. Thank you for watching.